In this chapter, we will be studying systems of linear equations. In this lesson, we will be looking at how to solve systems by substitution. So now in this lesson, we're going to take a look at how you solve systems of equations algebraically, and we're going to start with a method called substitution. And there are, in this particular course here, three different ways that we're going to do this. We're going to solve by graphing, we're going to solve by the elimination method, and the substitution method. Right now, this is the one we're going to look at. Okay. Now, on the exam, sometimes students ask, well, on the exam, am I going to have the choice? Will I be able to do whatever I, I want? Well, yeah, in some questions you will, but not all of them. You, you will be expected to, to use each method uh, on the assessment there. So let's take a quick look at how the substitution method works. So this is practically what is going on here. Um, I'm going to talk about a little bit about a theory here in just a second as well here. But what you do is you choose one of the two equations and you're going to isolate one of the variables. Now, when you do this, there's going to be a temptation to, to look at two, the two equations and to always want to isolate the y coordinate because that's what you do. Uh, up until this point when you've graphed lines, and for the most part, what you've done is you have isolated the y to put it into slope-intercept form. And then you've, you've graphed that. But you need to understand here that that is not always the quickest way to, to, to solve these sorts of problems here. You have to be a little bit more fluid in your thinking. You have to choose one variable, it doesn't matter which one, and isolate it. Okay? So almost always you're going to try to isolate the one that has a coefficient of 1. So for example, if this was the equation here, what you would do is you would choose y. Okay, now here's an example of where that would make sense y has got a coefficient of 1, so to isolate that, all you'd have to do is take that negative 2x term and move it to the other side by changing its sign, and it becomes positive 2x plus 1. Okay? Now, what this means is, and yeah, I want to okay, give you a sense of, of how this is working here. Um, let's say this is one of the lines, okay? So let's just talk about what's going on here. y equals 2x plus 1. So I know that that's going to have a y-intercept of 1. It's going to have a slope of 2. So it's going to look something like this. Now, so the, the way this works here is every point on this line, if you want to think of it like this, every point on this line has the coordinates x comma y. Now, let's just zoom in on this a little bit. When I write it as x comma y, though, that does not necessarily mean x comma y is a point on this line. Because x and y can be any real numbers, okay? So if I want to write a, a point, a set of coordinates that are going to be specifically on this line, represent any point on this line, i got to be a little bit more specific. And the way I do that is I take advantage of the fact that this is the independent variable, this is the dependent variable. So we're going right back to what we were talking about a couple chapters ago when we were talking about graphing, okay, functions and whatnot. Remember in this case here that y depends on x. Now the question is, on this line, how does y depend on x? Well, it, it depends on x like this. You, you take whatever x coordinate you want, multiply it by 2, and add 1. That is how you get the y coordinate. In fact, the y coordinate is equal to that little expression. Oh! So really, I could rewrite this as x comma... I mean, it's a little bulkier than just writing a y here, but if I write 2x plus 1, then that all of a sudden takes this, this infinite number of points all over the coordinate plane and kind of, no, it's just these guys right here on this line. This is a general point. This is any point on this line. Okay. The way I, I move from point to point is I simply change the x value because when I change the x value, I automatically change the y value. Okay, into being 2 times x plus 1. These are the coordinates of every point on that line, and it's a much better way to write it than just x, y. Now, let's say that you've got some other, some other line here, uh, and I don't know what it is. Let's, let's, let's make one up here. Let's just say that it's the point. Now, I'm, this is probably going to work out poorly for me, but let's say that this is the line uh, y equals uh, negative 2x minus 5. Okay? That's this line right here. <coughs> now, let's take a quick look at the second step of, of my uh, method here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute this new equation for that variable into the other equation. Now, I'm, I'm doing exactly that, but I'm, I'm just couching this in a slightly different way here. 
every point on this line looks like this, x comma 2x plus 1. Every point on this line, including this one right here, including this one point right there, that point also has those coordinates. But because that point is also on this line, now there's, and there's just one of them, that's it, but at that particular special point here, those coordinates also work in this line here. So what we do is we're going to take these coordinates and substitute them in to the x and the y here. Now, this is just x, so if I substitute x in for x, well, nothing's, nothing's gonna change here, right? But now what I do is I substitute in the y, and this becomes 2x plus one. That's the new y coordinate is equal to negative 2x minus five. And now what I do is I solve for x, because now I've just got a very simple little equation here, and I would bring the negative 2x over 4x equals, uh, bring the one over, negative six, so x is equal to negative 3 halves. And now I've got the x coordinate, whoops, of the point of intersection. That's where that occurs, negative 3 halves. And if I wanted the y coordinate, I could very easily plug that back into this. And actually, actually, I chose a pretty good equation here, because if I plug that in, 2 times negative 3 halves is going to be negative 3, plus 1 is negative 2. So the coordinates of that point would be negative 3 halves comma negative 2. But the way this works is I, I write a point, okay, that represents every point along that line, and then I substitute that point into the other equation. Now, this can work as well by isolating the x. And so you'd have y, and then you'd have some equation for y here. It works just as well. It works easily here. Uh, theoretically, that's a little bit more complicated because when you're looking at that, you're switching like the independent, dependent, and it's, it's kind of a weird thing to do. However, in terms of the algebra, it, it works just fine, okay? So now normally what you would do at the end here is once you've got that solution, once you've figured out that point, you would choose one of the equations to substitute that value you just solved uh, for the remaining variable, variable uh, just to get the y coordinate like I was doing there. And then you're going to verify your solution. And normally the verification works like this. You're going to sub the point into uh, the original equation, the one that you didn't use to solve for y or the other variable. So sub the point into the original uh, equation to verify. All right, to verify. My handwriting's so terrible. Anyway, now let's take a look at some examples of this. Okay, so here we go. So solve the following systems of equations by substitution. So this is equation one, this is equation two. I'm, I'm gonna be lazy here. I'm gonna look for the easiest relationship to establish here, and in this case, it's gonna be by taking equation one and isolating y, because the coefficient of y here is one. So y is going to equal negative two x plus three, okay? That's equation number one, and this tells me that every point on this line is going to have the coordinates x comma negative 2x plus 3, because this is exactly what y equals. y is negative 2x plus 3. So where the y goes in that coordinate, no, sorry, in that, that point, that's where I put the negative 2x plus 3. Now, I'm going to substitute that point into the other equation, okay? So plugging x in, well, that, doesn't, that doesn't change anything. So this is going to be 4 times x plus 3 times that. Now because that's a, a binomial, I have to put parentheses around that because the whole thing is y, not just the negative 2x up front, the whole thing. And that's going to equal 5. See, now I've got an equation. Here I had two equations with two unknowns. Now I've got one equation with one unknown. And I've been solving stuff like that for a long time. So I'm going to just distribute that 3 through to get 4x minus 6x plus 9, remember the 3 times the 3, equals 5. Uh, 4x minus 6x, negative 2x. And then bring the 9 over, I'll get negative 4. And so x is equal to positive 2. Okay, now, if x is equal to positive 2, what I can do is I can go back up to this little expression right here that I just figured out here and say, oh, okay, if this is positive 2, then if I plug that in there, negative 2 times 2 is negative 4, plus 3 is negative 1. Now, I need to verify that that point actually works. Now, 
Now notice the way I did this though. I used equation number one to get my y coordinate. I already know that this works in equation number one. So I'm going to verify in two. Just to make sure. So this will be four times two, four x, plus three times negative one is equal to five. Is that true? Is eight minus three equal to five? Yes, it is. And so yes, it is. I know that the solution here is the point two, negative one. All right, let's take a look at this one right here. And again, here's equation one, here's equation two. Now notice in this case here, and I was hoping we have a question like this, notice in this case that the easiest variable to isolate here is in equation one, and it's x this time. So equation one here is going to be x equals negative three y minus two. Now that's, that's not comfortable for a lot of people. I understand that. I, <laughs> my best advice to you is, Get comfortable with it. Because if you try to isolate y in either one of these equations, you're going to get fractions. And as soon as fractions start popping up, you know that it gets that, that little bit more complicated and errors are, are more likely to pop up here. Now, in this particular case here, when I write the point, notice that I've now, I'm creating dependence of x on y. So y is just going to be y, and the x here is negative 3y minus 2. Again, that's not the way we normally do this, but it, it's, it is possible to, for the algebra to work like that. It's just conceptually, that's a little awkward. But I, I encourage you to help, you know, get past that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take that point from equation 1, and we're going to substitute it in to equation 2. This is what my x is equal to, so I'm going to plug that in for x. Now again, because that's a binomial, I gotta put brackets around it, so negative three y minus two, that whole thing is x. And then the y didn't change in this case. Distribute that through, so we'll get positive nine y plus six is equal to, whoops, sorry, it's not equal to, it's plus five y, plus five y equals six. Oh, now notice something kinda interesting happens here. Notice that the x's cancel. I get 14y is equal to zero in that case, so y is equal to zero. Nothing wrong with zero as an answer, nothing at all. And if I plug that back in to equation one into my point, I can get my x coordinate, right? Negative three times zero is, ne is zero. I just about said negative three there. Negative three times zero is zero. Minus two is negative two. So the point that we're looking at here is the point negative two, zero. Now, I used equation one to get that x-coordinate. So I'm going to verify in two. Now, I mean, you're gonna see that happen probably a lot, because in a, a lot of the examples that we're gonna do, equation one is going to be the easier one to work with. But it doesn't have to be like that. I mean, it could be equation two, and then I verify in equation one. It, you just have to be able to adapt to that. But now here's equation two. It's gonna be negative three. Now, x here, we said was negative two, plus five times y, which was zero, is supposed to equal six. Well, does six plus zero equal six? Yes, it does. And so now we've been able to verify that the solution here is the point negative two, zero. And I didn't say it the last time here, but notice how I'm writing my answers. It's x comma y with parentheses around it, okay? If you don't write the parentheses there, that's not a point. If you don't put the parentheses in there, this is not x and this is not y, okay? It's just two numbers that I happen to have sh string, str bleh, strung together, okay, in a row there. You need to have the parentheses there to make that work. Okay, let's have another look at one here. So here's my system, four x minus y equals three. There's equation one, here's equation two. Okay, well, uh, the easiest one for me to solve it here looks like y in that first equation. So I'm gonna bring the four x over, so it'll become negative y equals negative four x plus three. And I'll divide everything through by the negative just to make that nice and clean, positive four x minus three, which means the point that I'm working with, okay, now y again depends on x, so this is gonna be x comma four x minus three. That's the y coordinate. And now, as we've done before, I'm gonna take that point and substitute it into the other equation, okay? Because it should work, that point should work. 
in that, equa uh, that other equation for at least one point there, wherever they intersect. So 6 times x, good, minus 2 times, and I need parentheses because that's a binomial, 4x minus 3, it's going to equal 5. Distribute the coefficient. Man, we, we do that a lot. That happens all the time. It's so interesting that that occurs. Uh, 6x minus 8x, it's negative 2x. Uh, bring the 6 over, subtract it from both sides, we get negative 1. x is equal to positive 1 half. Okay, well I got a fraction, well that's not such a big deal, but I got a fraction there. Now if I plug 1 half into this, remember I'm going to go back to my equation 1 here, 4 times a half is 2, okay, half of 4 is 2, minus 3 is negative 1. So the point that I'm looking at here is the point 1 half comma negative 1. Remember I used equation 1 to get that y coordinate. So I'm going to, once again, I'm going to verify in 2. All right, so where's my point here? My point was 1 half comma negative 1. Okay, so here we go. 6 times 1 half minus 2 times negative 1 is equal to 5. Okay, well now I got some negatives going on here. I got to be careful with this. If the mistake is going to be made anywhere, it's going to be made here with the, with the negatives here. So we'll be careful. 6 times 1 half is 3. Negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2 equals 5. Now, does 3 plus 2 equal 5? Yes, it does. And so my solution is the point 1 half comma negative 1. Okay, this next question here offers us uh, some options here. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean in just a second. So I've got equation 1 here and equation 2. Now, when I look at this immediately, the thing that jumps out at me is this guy right here, that fraction. So, ooh, ooh, I, I don't like having that fraction in there. I'd really rather not work with it. See, so now the beautiful thing about mathematics is that you can look at that question and say, oh, I don't really like that question. I'd rather have a different question here. Let's change the question. So in this system right here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take equation two and I'm going to multiply equation 2 by 4 by that common denominator. When I multiply equation 2 by 4, okay, and I'm going to distribute that 4 to every term in this equation. Well, 4 times 3x is 12x, okay? But 4 times a quarter y, what's 4 times a quarter? Well, just 1. So this becomes y. Now, but remember, I have to do this to both sides of the equation, to every term here for this to work. I can't just do it to the one, the one term that I want to clean up here, so I have to do it to the other side of the equation. But the beautiful thing is it's zero, and four times zero is just zero. So now have a look at this. I've got four x plus y minus two equals zero, and 12 x plus y equals zero. And remember, this is equation two here. Well, in terms of simplifying, this is the easier one. So I'm going to take equation 2 now, my, my new and improved equation 2 that's much prettier. I'm going to solve for y here, negative 12x. And so the point that I'm going to get here is the point x comma negative 12x. Okay, now I'm going to substitute equation, uh, sorry, that point from 2 into equation 1. So this will be 8x plus y. Now in this case that y is negative 12x. Now I'm putting parentheses around this because I got a negative in there. I just want to make sure I, I handle that appropriately. And then minus 2 is equal to 0. Okay, so this is going to be 8x plus negative 12x. Well that's just going to be minus 12x. And you know what, I'm just going to bring the 2 over to the other side right now because I'm, I'm going to isolate the x here in a second. 8x minus 12x, it's going to be negative 4x is equal to 2. And when I divide by negative 4, I will get negative 1 half. Okay, so I got a fraction again. I mean, I had a fraction in, that question, in the question. I'm not surprised there's a fraction in the answer here. Let's take that negative 1 half. Let's go back to equation 2, that point that I have. What's negative 12 times negative 1 half? Yeah, be careful. Negative times a negative is positive. So my point here is going to be negative 1 half comma positive. And now what's one half of 12? And the answer is six. So there's my, whoops, sorry. There's my solution. Now what I'm gonna do, because this was, I got this point here from equation two, I'm gonna verify in one. 
And so now that'll be 8 times negative 1 half plus 6 minus 2 is supposed to equal 0. Well, is that true? Well, negative 1 half of 8 is negative 4 plus 6 minus 2. Does that, in fact, equal 0? Well, negative 4 plus 6 is 2 minus 2. Yes, it's 0. And so, yep, the solution to this system is, in parentheses, negative 1 half comma 6. Okay, now, here's another example of a question that needs a little bit of help before we get to a point where we're really going to try to solve it here. So here's equation one, here's equation two. Um, yeah, there's a lot more going on here. This is a lot more complicated to look at. Let's simplify this down. I've got these binomials with, with coefficients out front. Let's just simplify that. So here's equation one. That's going to end up being 6x plus 9. I'm going to distribute the negative through. It'll be negative y plus 8 equals negative 1. Okay? Now, I'm just going to bring together uh, the like terms and, and maybe br bring them over to the other side here. So I'm going to have 6x minus y. Now, 9 plus 8 is 17. And I can subtract that from both sides. I'll get negative 18. So there's my first equation. Okay? And it looks a lot better. Equation 2 when I distribute that 5 through, it's going to become 5 minus 15x. Then distribute the negative 2 through. Negative 8 plus 2y is going to equal 42. And I'll do the same thing as, as I did above here. So it'll be negative 15x plus 2y is equal to, well, okay, well, 5 minus 8 is negative 3. When I bring that negative 3 over, I'm going to add it to the other side. It'll become 45. So here are my two equations now. And they're much simpler, much easier for me to work with. I'm going to take equation 1 here and solve for y, because that's going to be the, the easiest variable to isolate. So this will become negative y sorry, <clears throat> is equal to negative 6x minus 18, bringing the negative over, so y is equal to 6x plus 18. And now, this gives me the coordinates x comma 6x plus 18. And now this is what I'm going to substitute into equation 2. Okay, x comma 6x plus 18. So, and remember, here's equation 2. So over here, uh, this is going to become negative 15x plus 2 times, and I have to put these in parentheses here, uh, 6x plus 18, and that is going to equal 45. Okay, now distribute that through here. So negative 15x plus 12y uh, plus 36 is equal to 45. I got negative 15x plus 12x is going to be negative 3x. And then I'm going to subtract the 36 from both sides. Okay, so, well, 45 minus 36, that's going to be 9. And so when I divide that negative 3 through, I'll get neg 9 divided by negative 3 is negative 3. Now, but bear in mind, here's the point that I was using. I got this from equation 1. So this gives me the coordinates, negative 3, comma. Okay, well, 6 times negative 3 is negative 18, plus 18. Oh, that's nice. It's 0. I got this from equation 1, so I'm going to verify in equation 2. That's this one right here. And so that's going to be negative 15 times negative 3, plus 2 times 0, equals 45. Well, is 45 plus 0 equal to 45? Yes, it is. Whoops, sorry, can't see that hardly. And so that means that the solution to our system here is, in fact, the point negative 3, 0. Okay, now we're going to take a look at some word problems here. And this one here is a pretty standard sort of system of equations type problem. Okay, tickets are sold for the Senior Safari Day at Greater Vancouver uh, Zoo. Okay, so here we go. Merrill buys five admission tickets and three train tickets and pays 65 bucks. Now notice, we don't know how much either one of those are. Howard buys two admission tickets and one train ticket and pays 25 bucks. We're going to create a system of equations to determine the price of each type of ticket. Now, I know that word problems can be somewhat daunting. I, I get that, okay? Let me help you out here. One of the first things you want to do with word problems here is, is you want to identify a variable. because And the, the choice of variable is important here because in most cases, 
You want that variable to be the thing that you're looking for so that when you solve for it finally in the problem, that is the answer. So in this case right here, create a system of equations to determine the price of each type of ticket. Now, so I'm going to identify my variables here. I'm going to let x equal, and I could use any variable I want, but most of us are going to default to x and y. It, it doesn't matter. I mean, I could have used uh, admission to A for admission and T for train. It doesn't matter, but most of us are going to use X and Y. So I'm not going to fight you on that one. So we're going to let X be the, the price of admission. And we'll let Y equal the price of the train ticket. Okay. Now, Usually in these contexts, in these kind of questions, sentences become equations. I'll show you what I mean here. So Merrill buys five admission tickets. Okay, five admission tickets. So X is the price of admission. So five X's and I'm going to add to that three train tickets. So three Y's and pays. The total of that is 65. Okay, so there we go. There, that sentence gave me an equation. Now I've got a new sentence here. Now this is, by the way, this doesn't always work, but frequently it does. Howard buys two admission tickets. Okay, well that's, that's two X's and a train ticket and he pays a total of 25. This next equation, next sentence. So now we're going to solve this particular system of equations here. This is equation one, this is equation two. Notice that the easier one to solve for here is equation 2, and we get y is equal to negative 2x plus 25, which tells me that the coordinates of any point on that line will be x comma negative 2x plus 25. That's the y coordinate. I will take that and plug it into equation 1, okay? Because I know that at one point, that the coordinates of this line should fit in this line here. So, 5 times x, no change there, plus 3 times, okay, here we go. There's a binomial there, so I'm going to put parentheses. Negative 2x plus 25 equals, in this case, 65. All right, well, what do I got to do? Well, I got to expand and solve, just like I've, I've done previously here. So 5x plus, ooh, that was wrong, negative 6x. 3 times negative 2x is negative 6x plus 75. Remember to distribute the 3 to the 25 equals 65. Okay, well 5x minus 6x, that's easy, that's negative x. I subtract 75 from both sides, I get negative 10. So it makes it really quite straightforward, x is equal to 10. Now, if x is equal to 10, I can use this point right here. Okay, I will get uh, 10 comma, well negative 2 times 10 is negative 20 plus 5 25, sorry, is 5. All right, so there's the solution that I got. I used equation 2 to get it. So I'm going to verify, and I'm, I'm not necessarily going to write this out here. We're going to verify an equation 1. 5 times 10 plus 3 times 5, does that equal 65? Does 50 plus 15 equal 65? And the answer is yes, that works. That is the solution. Now, but you can't stop there because this is a word problem. Okay, that doesn't actually answer the question. I need you to answer the question here. And so create a system to determine the price of each type of a ticket. Okay, well the admission ticket, okay, admission is $10. Uh, the train ticket costs and what was it here? Five dollars. Whoops, there you go. So I, we need there to be some sort of recognition as to what your point actually means. Okay? We need you to interpret the answer to actually answer the question. If you don't have that in there, it's not actually clear that you understand what this is telling you. Okay? So, in order to get like full marks for problem, I guess, we need to see some identification of what the variables are. We need to see a system. We need to see you solve a system. But then we need to see you interpret that answer so that you, you know there, there's evidence here that you know what it is that you just did.
All right, now in this question, uh, what do we read here? It says a math test has uh, short answer questions and word problems. A short answer question is worth two marks, okay. And a word problem is worth four marks, okay, yeah. There are 11 questions for a total of 30 marks. Okay, now it, it doesn't say here, but uh, the, the question really should be how many of each type of question are there? Yeah. We missed writing that in there, but that, that's what the question would be here in this case. So let's start off with a let statement. We're gonna let X, I'll use X and Y again. We'll let X be the number of short answer, and we'll let Y be the number of word problems. Now in this particular case right here, this is a good example of kind of a, an exception to what I was saying before. I said before that, that sentences become equations. That's not necessarily true here. In fact, it turns out both of my uh, equations are gonna come from this last sentence. There are 11 questions. Okay, well if X is the number of short answer and Y is the number of word problems, well that means that X plus Y must equal 11. Okay, and then we've got a, a so that we have a total number of questions here, a total number of questions, and then we have a total number of marks. Well, the total number of marks here is 30. Well, to get the total number of marks, how many marks am I getting from the, the short answer? Well, I'm getting two for every short answer and four for every written, or is there a word problem? That's my system. Two marks plus four marks, okay, two marks per question plus four marks per question is equal to 30 marks total. The number of, uh, sorry, whoops, the number of short answer plus the number of word problems is 11 here. So here's equation one, here's equation two. Now, I think it's pretty clear, equation one is gonna be the easier one to, to manipulate, to isolate. So I'm gonna isolate y in equation one. So negative x plus 11. And that's gonna give me the point x comma negative x plus 11. And I'm gonna substitute that point into equation two. So I will get 2x plus four times, and I have to put these in parentheses because I got a binomial. Four times negative x plus 11 is equal to 30. Just like we've done before, we're gonna distribute that coefficient through. So 2x minus 4x plus 44 is equal to 30. Now, 2x minus 4x is gonna be negative 2x. And when I bring that 44 over, when I subtract that from both sides, I'm gonna get negative 14. And when I divide by negative two, I'll get that x is equal to seven. Okay, if you plug that in to that equation one, where I have this point here to get the y coordinate, I'll get that x is seven, and then y is gonna be four. Now let's verify, okay? We used equation one to get the y coordinate of the point. So let's go to equation two and see if we can make this work here. So two times seven plus four times four, does that equal 30? Well, that's gonna be 28. I should 28. I don't know why I thought that was four times seven. It's gonna be 14 plus 16. Does that equal 30? Yes, it does. And so we know that that point here, seven, four, is a solution to the system. But again, that doesn't answer the word problem. We have to say there are, what do we got here? Seven short answer questions and four word problems. Okay, we need to have some sort of evidence that we understand what that point means.